Hey there, Mission Control. Well, while I was at work today, we had a delivery. We got us a banana tree. What is this one here? Clementine tree. Nice. We got right here, this is a grapefruit tree. And then we have the almond tree and the dwarf peach tree and the apple tree are all here. So with these trees showing up, we need to get them into the planters where we have coco core, some worm castings, I'm putting some vermiculite into them, uh, mix that all up, get these things set down in there. Uh, and then I think that, oh, uh, kiwi. Kiwi is the only thing that we don't have yet and that goes here on this bed, this is lane two, bed five. We're gonna trellis that kiwi up. I got a male and female coming. We'll see how they do. But we wanna get these guys into the ground tonight. So uh, let's get started on that. All right, so I got some bags of vermiculite here. We're just gonna spread some of this in there to just help with aeration is my understanding of this. So we put that in there and we're gonna mix it all up with a shovel. And that will just help it drain a little bit better and get some air down on those roots. These are uh, two foot wide pots that we have here. So they should be plenty big for the entire run of these dwarf trees. So we gotta get everything in and mix it up and then we'll start putting the trees in. All right, so I got all the vermiculite and the worm castings and the cocoa core in there. And I'm just mixing it up. Mixing it up. This is pretty exciting. I am excited about this. I think this is pretty cool. Now, biggest thing is, can we grow it? Our number one problem so far in this whole can you grow thing uh, saga has been watering. Too much water. You think you're not giving enough. In actuality, you're giving too much. And that has been our biggest downfall. I'm gonna get this all mixed up here and we'll come back and I'll show you uh, putting the plant or the trees in. All right, just got done mixing everything. Now I'm gonna unwrap these guys here. I bought these online, got them shipped to me. They're coming in bare root form. So you gotta get them out of the packaging here, which there's lots of. Into the ground as quickly as we can, according to the instructions. And this is the one night I left my pocket knife up in the freaking house. Boy, that's a lot of tape. I have something out here. Ooh, puppy, try not to hurt him. There you are, little guys. Spring to life. You're gonna like your new home here. Makes me want to go get my, I stepped on those uh, poppers there. Makes me want to go get my back cracked with a chiropractor. I haven't done that in a while. Sounds like it would feel good. All right. I'm get the roots. Shake the roots loose there. Got another, I think these are like baby banana plant there. These are the bulbs. I think banana is more like a grass is my understanding of how it kind of works. Uh, so it spreads more like a grass than it does a tree. I'm gonna get that in there. I'm gonna put some more cocoa core on top of that thing. It's a little low in the pot there.
Okay, now I'm supposed to break up that. Get those roots to where they want to spread back out again. Oh, I don't want to get too crazy with it. Now, I've never done this before, but I'm pretty sure that you want the tree up close to the top of the, the planter so that the roots have plenty of area to go. So I'm kind of getting the top raised up here a little bit. And we're gonna grab that and reset it down in there. These ones here shipped bare root, so I'm gonna dig out a little hole here and try to get those roots down, point it in the right direction. And down there, buddy. Middle of the pot here. God's creation is just amazing how these things work. That's zero straight there. I just got the last tree put in. I needed to rehydrate a little bit more coca core to put in the rest of these here. But while I'm waiting for that to rehydrate, Mrs. Martian has this, uh, I think it's a, a good fungus, uh, like a happy fungus, like a helper fungus spray. And we're just gonna spray some of that on these since they're coming in from out of town here. And this will help. Apparently, this is a lesson learned from our uh, experience with mold and fungus. This is a, a beneficial fungus. I, I don't know the name. This is her, her area of expertise now. Uh, all those experiments she's doing, which I think are pretty awesome. Uh, she's pretty awesome. She's pretty and awesome. So uh, that makes her pretty awesome. Anyway, she discovered, I think a subscriber sent this to us or something, but uh, this is a beneficial spray fungus water mixture thing that will help uh, give the plants a little leg up in case there's any bad juju on them. Yeah. Bought this from a reputable source online, but you can never be too cautious, I guess. Well, I guess you can in some cases, but 
That saying doesn't make two cents. Yes, you can be too cautious. You can take things overboard. Anything out of moderation could be bad, te technically, even if it's for a good cause, right? Anyway, there we go. Happy fungus on new happy trees. Gonna do their thing, get some nice sunshine tomorrow. Uh, and hopefully light them right back up. So we got our grapefruit here. Yeah, grapefruit. So from the top, what we got? Banana, dwarf banana. This is a Grand Nine uh, banana, uh, four foot. Uh, so got it all put in there. Uh, this is the one that looks the worst. It's, it's obviously been sitting outside. Um, so we'll, we'll get it in here, let it get some good air, and uh, start doing its thing, hopefully. That should be exciting. I, it doesn't look like that's going to fruit this year. I don't see how that's going to be possible, but I'd be impressed if it did. Um, this is the clementine tree. This one apparently smells. Yeah, you can smell a little bit. And there are little bulbs on here already, so there's a good chance that we could have this for the Martian challenge. This is the grapefruit tree. This is the ruby red grapefruit. Ruby red. That's gonna be nice. Get that going. Looks like that could potentially do something this year. Uh, of course, these have been sitting outside dormant. This is the almond, dwarf almond tree. Looks like it's starting to have some buds on it. Uh, but boy, once it gets a good dose of sun, uh, which they will here. I'm thinking these things will come right back to life here. And then we have the uh, banan Bonanza Dwarf Pea. <laughs> Bonanza Dwarf Peach. I love peaches. That will be cool. And then we have the Garden Delicious Apple. Get some more coca Core in those. Uh, and then uh, give them a healthy dose of water. And that'll be it for tree planting. So we still have some things to do uh, on these. We're, we're not done. We're not just gonna, we're gonna, for right now, we're gonna be spraying them with just well water. And we got some uh, nutritional thingabobbers to put down in there. Uh, but we will be running a split aquaponic system. So I gotta design the automation control unit that will control it so we can be gone and they can get watered uh, when we're not here. And I'm thinking I'm gonna drop a pond pump into lane two, which is right there. And then I got a string, um, get power out here and get, which only needs to be 12 volt power, uh, and control this thing somehow, get the water out here. And I could, I could just easily bring a water pipe out here and just kind of hang it between these, but then you're not gonna be able to do this. You'd be doing something like that. And I ain't flexible, so. I'm not excited about that. I could just tape it to the floor, I guess. That won't hurt anything. That seems like a decent idea. Just tape it right to the floor. Good old fashioned 100 mile per hour tape. Right down on the floor there, run it over. Tape it down so you can't trip on it. That doesn't hurt my head too much. Uh, I could also try bringing it up underneath the flooring, uh, but I think you're gonna have pinch tubing if you did that because uh, the floor would sit on it, unless you actually pulled up the floor itself. Yeah, and then you'd be pulling each section up, and I just don't think that's going to be worth it uh, to run it underneath. But I'll think about it, kind of sleep on it, see what uh, happens there. Uh, so each one gets a control unit that'll measure uh, temperature and humidity of the soil itself. With all those uh, uh, water sensors that I had from last year, they're going unused because they're soil, uh, water, uh, moisture content sensors, and they didn't work for aquaponics. Uh, so, but with this, I can use them and put that in there and monitor the uh, water content and then have the server control everything so they always get exactly the right amount of water. So I'm excited about that. But we gotta get those all put in there and bring, like I said, 12 volt power out to each one of those and run it. So gotta think about how I wanna do that. I have power right here right at, at your feet on the camera is where I have 120 volt power. So would not be hard to run a, a wire right underneath the floor here. That wouldn't get pinched and bring it up and off we go. Um, or I could have a single control unit like I did on the lanes 
and then just have all the sensors running into it. So those are the only wires that are running. Lots of options there. I'm going to think through that uh, some more, but we got green stuff back in here again. Microgreens seem to be coming back online. We're going to be planting this week. Uh, looks like we're in a pretty good spot um, with the valve overflow problem that we had that I spoke about in an earlier video. We have some lane re-leveling that we have to do, so we're going to try to get to that this weekend. Um, boy, oh boy. You know, we're getting, we're getting closer. We're getting so much closer to this thing really just going, you know? I mean, really exciting. Starting to refactor some of the lanes um, for these new beds that we put in, the, the flood and drain beds. Uh, we've got uh, all the beds back here that need to get refactored. We've got corn and watermelon and cantaloupe. You know, if it grows, it grows. If it doesn't, I mean, that's great, actually. If it doesn't grow, it doesn't grow. We learn something. Uh, we'll figure it all out like we have with the microgreens. So uh, it's our goal this year that you walk in here and really you can't see any more of the racking. It's just all green. Just everything is green. Flowers, plants, you know, mostly all food, but uh, figure that all out. Some people have recommended we get bees and I'm thinking maybe right back there, actually, I could put a little beehive. Uh, it's kind of got a shaded area there so it won't be right in the sun. And uh, I could have a flap where they go out of the building and then come back in, but yeah, I don't know, that's gonna be interesting. We'll see how that all works. Uh, I could see that one going wonky on me real fast. Like the bees decided to build a nest up in the, or a hive up in the insulation, that would be just horrible. Anyway, hey, thanks for following along. You got some random thinking there. Just, um, you know, there's so much stuff going on right now. Uh, it, it's actually helpful for me to talk it out with you guys on the camera because otherwise it's just a task list. It's a Gantt schedule. It's a JIRA backlog. And sometimes you just need to kind of come out here get your hands dirty and really start thinking through, talking through everything. So I appreciate you guys letting me kind of ramble with you. Believe it or not, it's actually helpful. Um, so if you did like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe. And uh, don't forget you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Patreon. In the meantime, this is The Real Martian with trees.